they get there, they start questioning me. I'm, I'm trying to lie to them. I'm just like, oh no, you know, I took a couple drinks. It's all good. Everything's all good. Y'all can go. They ain't having it. They're like, nah, man, something's, something's not right with you. What did you take? What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to my channel, Hustling 101, where I share my life with the world, the good, the bad, and everything in between. Do me a favor, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you get value. If not, don't. So, I've made this video once before, back when I didn't really know how to do YouTube that good, and I wasn't really good at talking on camera and all that. So I feel like it's a video worth remaking, remastering. Um, so we're going to talk about the time. Actually, I've overdosed six times on fentanyl. Some of you already know that. Some of you may not. If you're new to the channel, you, you probably don't know anything about me. So, uh, hey, welcome to the channel. We're going to talk about one time specifically that I overdosed. Probably the closest I came to death. So this is this was more in the early days of my fentanyl usage. I had uh, I had been going through this girl I knew and I was I was doing the the blue 30s the counterfeit pills some of you already know what those are the girl I was going through at the time kind of fell out I wasn't really messing with her or whatever so I ended up finding somebody new it was another girl I knew ironically she was in Chattanooga Tennessee this happened in Chattanooga Tennessee I ended up I had been going through her for for you know probably like a month or whatever but I wasn't getting the blue 30s from her. I was getting the powder. They say the powder's more deadly, and I'm a believer of that because it almost killed my fucking ass. So I had been going through her, but th this day specifically, I was, uh, oh, and another important thing that y'all should know is I wasn't that heavy on the fentanyl at this time. I was kind of just doing it on the weekends when I had free time and things like that. That's how it always starts, and then it turns into something worse that's that's what happened to me basically but that's for another video topic i was just getting high on the weekends having fun with it so i thought so i hit old girl up she's staying in a hotel i go to the hotel like i normally would usually she's real quick getting my shit this this day specifically it was taking a lot longer than normal i ended up sitting there for like 45 minutes and I'm an impatient person, guys. I don't like to wait. I like to get in, get my shit, and get out. So this day, th this day, I had to wait. I had to wait. So I'm getting impatient. I'm sitting there, but what do you do, man? You gotta wait. So I'm waiting on my shit. She finally gets it. Okay. Normally, I would get my stuff. I would leave. I would go home be by myself, get high, and do whatever I was going to do for that day, right? Right. This saved my life, guys. Me being impatient and having to wait this particular day saved my life because I was so ready to do my shit, get high, do a couple hits, whatever. I didn't, I didn't take the shit and leave. I told old girl, you know, I'm going to break down... And I would smoke my shit. I wouldn't shoot it or snort it or do I would put it on aluminum foil and smoke it. I already had my ancillaries with me. I told old girl, I'm like, look, I, I'm going to go ahead and do a couple hits before I leave. I've been waiting. Uh, I'm trying to feel this shit kick in. I don't want to wait till I get all the way home. So I do it, bruh. I, you know, I, I opened the little thing, put me a little bit on some full. I do a big ass hit. You know, anybody that smokes fentanyl, you, you know how it is. You hold it in as long as you can, blow it out, and then you start feeling it, whatever. So I'm like, all right. I go to do another hit. And that's the last thing I remember. That's the last thing I remember, guys. Oh, the thumbnail picture that I used for the thumbnail is an actual photo. If you see the uh, marks on my face, when, when I did that second hit, according to old girl, she told me that I, I was sitting on the edge of the hotel bed, right? I fell. I just collapsed. 
boom, straight on my face. And that's how my face got marked up like that. Yeah, the picture and the thumbnail. So I, I take that second hit. Last thing I remember, I don't remember falling. I don't remember doing none of that. The next thing I remember is waking up like fucking headache, disoriented. I can't even, I can barely walk. I, I almost want to say it's kind of like being drunk, but that's not even a good comparison. I, there's nothing really that feels like it. Like I've never felt anything like it other than that's how I know what an overdose feels like. Every time I overdosed after that, I, I knew I had overdosed because the headache, the, 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 the disorientation that you go through, you, you can't really, um, what do you call it? Like your, uh, your coordination's off. Your coordination's off big time. So I wake up. Old girl is frantic. She's crying. You know, she just witnessed an overdose. So, you know, she was, uh, she was scared. She was probably scared that she was going to go to jail. She sold me the shit, whatever. You know, if you sell somebody fentanyl and they die, they link that back to you. You're, you're getting charged with murder. That, that's how it goes. So <clears throat> she was scared to death. But what saved my life, back to what I was talking about, how me being impatient and me doing the shit right there, she was able to go run and get somebody that she knew at the hotel. They happened to have Narcan. This was before the ambulance even arrived. They happen to have Narcan, the injection kind, the, the kind that you inject. And, bro, they hit me with it five times. It's not supposed to take that much, but I wasn't coming back. I wasn't coming back. I was laying. I was turning blue. They told me I was turning blue, all kinds of shit. I wasn't breathing. I was fucking dead, guys. I was out. They hit me with Narcan, ended up hitting me five times. I finally come back. That I had ice stuffed all in my pants. They went and got ice. I guess that's supposed to help when you OD. I don't know a, a whole lot about the ice deal, but I had ice all in my pants. I was shivering cold as fuck. But, but right when I woke up, the police had got there. And don't ask me why, but the first thing on my mind was, fuck, I need to get to my car. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to go to jail. That's, that's what's on my mind. I'm thinking, shit, I'm going to go to jail. I, it, my, I can't even think straight, but I'm thinking, what the fuck am I going to tell these police officers to get out of this? You know, they just called 911 saying that I overdosed. I, I need to come up with a lie to get them to leave so I can jump in my car and just go, man. I want to, I'm, I'm mainly worried about going to jail and then my job finding out, losing my job. Like I said, I had a really good job, but, uh, they get there, they start questioning me. I'm, I'm trying to lie to them. I'm just like, oh no, you know, I took a couple drinks. It's all good. Everything's all good. Y'all can go. They ain't having it. They're like, nah, man, something's, something's not right with you. What did you take? And then he, he, he informs me. He's like, look, bro, you're not going to go to jail, but we need to know what you took so we can help you. So finally I'm like, shit. I'm thinking they're tricking me. Guys, I've dealt with the police a lot. They, they I, I've been lied to police by police. A lot of times the police will lie to you to get answers. So I'm think so I just risk it. I'm like, all right. He says he's not gonna take me to jail. I tell him, like, look, look, I did some fentanyl. He's like, how did you do it? I told him I smoked it. He's like, all right, man, look, ambulance is on the way, just stay sitting down. Uh like two or three minutes later, the ambulance comes rushing in. They uh, they questioned me too, asked me what I took, whatever. They uh, they put me in the little bed, wheel me out to the fucking ambulance, start hooking IVs in me and shit. I get lectured by like ten different people to the hospital. You know them tell like like doctors do. They're just trying to help. They're just trying to help. They're trying to put it in your head that you know you don't need to be doing this stuff. You almost died. You're very lucky to be alive. I had one doctor tell me that if I would have been out for four more minutes, there would have been no saving me. I'd be dead. And then another nurse, I remember another nurse walked in there and told me, this is crazy, man. She predicted what was going to happen to me. She said her husband got on fentanyl, had a six-figure job, lost it, lost everything to fentanyl. 
And at this point, I was still okay. I still had my job. I could have quit. I'd still be doing good. I should have. But when you're when you're in junk addiction, man, you don't listen to nobody. But she literally predicted what was going to happen to me. She said, if you don't quit, that's going to happen to you. And it did, guys. I lost a six-figure job. I lost a six-figure job because I, I didn't stop. Uh, but back to the being in the hospital, they're lecturing me. They have to hold me for like five hours, I think, because what basically what can happen is the the drug is still in your system, right? And the Narcan, basically what the Narcan does is it puts a wall up and blocks the opiate. It don't let the opiate through to your receptors. So the reason they have to monitor you after you overdose is because that Narcan can wear off and the drug can still be active. And if that Narcan wears off and the drug seeps back into the your system, you can you can overdose again. So they gotta monitor me for four or five hours. I end up just falling asleep, to be honest. I fell asleep the whole time. I wake up, they tell me, okay, you're good to go. Uh, I got my phone with me, thank God. I took, uh, I call an Uber back to the hotel I was at. My car's still there. And I get my keys. I go get my keys from girl. I'm like, look, I don't want nothing to do with that shit you got no more. That was the last time I messed with her. I get my keys, I leave, and I go, I, I go home. That picture that, that I put in my thumbnail, that I literally still had the little, uh, those things they stick on you, whatever the fuck those things are called, and sent that to my mom. I, I let her know, you know, what had happened. I felt, I felt like she deserved to know. Somebody deserved to know, you know? And uh, yeah, that that's how it went down, guys. I ended up going back to my other dealer thinking that, oh, the blue 30s are safer or whatever. And none of this shit's safe, guys. Don't think that. I overdosed on the blue 30s, too, uh, more than once. But in, in my in my addict mind, me wanting to justify getting high, I went back to the blue 30s two days later and was getting high again. So the overdose didn't teach me anything. Uh, yeah, so that's my overdose story, guys. I hope you liked it. I hope you stay off drugs. Don't do what I did. I put these videos out to help people and bring awareness to, and something I want to talk about. Hold on. You always think that it can't happen to you. That's how I thought. You know, I've always had a real high tolerance for drugs and alcohol. I've always been like the biggest drinker. I can drink more than everybody. I can do more drugs than everybody. I'm thinking, shit, I, you know, I'm good. Whatever. You think it can't happen to you until it fucking does, man. You, you, until it does. And you might not get as lucky as I did. You know, I'm, I'm extremely lucky to be alive right now to tell my story to the world, to YouTube, or to whoever is interested in it. Stay off drugs, man. You might not get lucky. You might be one of the statistics that they add to the opioid crisis deaths you know i could have easily been part of that statistic so yeah guys i put these videos out to bring awareness stay off drugs i'm about to go to the gym but you already know what it is man i'm just a guy that decided to get on youtube and share his life with the world like comment subscribe and as always peace out